Hey, hey, everybody. This is Larry. This is me doing a bonus question. Uh, hit the like button, subscribe button, join me on Discord. Let me know what you think about this bonus question, which will get randomly. It's August 11, I guess, in 2022. So, yeah, I have a little bit of a cough, so I apologize if I'm coughing a bit on the video. Uh, dealing with fever earlier, so I'm not feeling super well. And I need to get premium. If you want to sponsor my premium, let me know. Uh, I'm, I'm being a little bit cheap. Anyway, today's problem then is 1043 partition array for maximum sum. So given an integer array or partition the array to contiguous subarray of a length most k. After each partition, each subarray has the value change to maximum value of the subarray. Return the largest sum of the given array after subarray. Okay, so k it could be 3. Or up to 3. Yeah, up to 3. Mm. I guess now I'm thinking a little bit, uh, n is equals to 500, so that's actually probably a hint that was dynamic programming. To be honest, I was thinking about maybe it could be some sort of greedy, but it's going to be dynamic programming because then, um, because it allows you to do brute force in a way if you're thinking about it, meaning that you can try for every k just skipping ahead, right? Um, and we'll go over the recurrence uh, pretty much now, I suppose. So... Yeah, I think 500 allows you to do a sort of 500 square type thing, so that would be good. And I don't even know that it is 500 square, to be honest, because I think there's a way to do this, but um, but we have to be really careful, right? Um, well... I think the lazy way we can do it with 500 squares, so let's do it that way, and then we'll t talk about how to optimize it. I think I have it in my head, and I know that I'm talking about complexity a lot and thinking about complexity. I know that way often I don't do that enough, so that's my fault, um, because I already know that it works, so then I just kind of jump straight into it and do the analysis later. But actually, the way that I solve problems is by thinking about the complexity first, right? Because no point of implementing something that is too slow. So... Uh, I mean, except for if you YOLO and you have like a minute left on a contest, and like, well, why not? Maybe I get lucky, you know? But otherwise, um, I would not do it. But this case, uh, we'll, we'll talk about how to do it. And I think there's an n log n solution. I don't think it's O of n, but but we can do it in n square. Um, Actually, there is probably an O of N solution, but but that's probably... Um, okay, we'll talk about it soon. But basically, the idea is getting the I, the best answer given a suffix, right? So that means that we want to max sum after some index. And, you know, this is just... Uh, if you are struggling with dynamic programming, this is going to be a little bit tricky. I definitely recommend, uh, you know, practicing some of the easier dynamic programming problems first. But... For this one, we straight go straight up the index because we only care about the max ends of the pre suffix, right? And then here we go, okay, if index is greater than you go to n, then we return zero. Right? What n is equal to length of one? Okay. And then now we want to say, okay, what if we start a partition from index? from this index, right? So that means that, you know, let's say we start from here. Well, that means that you want to get the max of the next K, right? So we would do something like um, max is equal to uh, max of, how do I want to say it? Say R of index, index plus K, maybe something like that. I'm always off by one. So I think this is right though. Um, yeah, and then we have two choices, right? We either start a partition from this index of length k, or we don't. So then we only, we only you know, use it by one. Mm, maybe that's not quite true. Maybe, maybe my original thing is wrong, now that I think about it. Because I think... I think I did have a, a greedy assumption that that we want to <clears throat> I had a greedy assumption that you either do all of K or not all of K, but 
But actually, you want to change from 1 to k, right? So this is going to be n squared anyway. So this is wrong. But basically, I have a rolling max, say, is to go to a rate of index, right? And then the idea here is going to be, okay, so we have... We have, okay, um, for i in range of k, we do something like rolling max. Is equal to max of rolling max, all of index plus i. And of course, we actually want um, to start from, eh, I guess from zero is fine, actually. So actually, we can, are there negative numbers? No. So we could start this at zero. I guess it doesn't really matter either way because it just does it. And then here we go, okay, now we choose k to be uh, to be 1. Or now we choose k to be 2. Now we choose k to be 3, dot, 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 right? So then now, then the best is equal to max of best, max sum index plus i plus 1, because now you completed this partition, so you want to get 1 over. And then you add this to the rowing max. The, the rowing max is basically saying, we um we choose all those numbers to be to use this max um because well you choose the max of that subarray right so if you choose the first one number then it chooses k is equal to one if, if you choose k is equal to two then you choose the max of the two numbers and so forth and this is basically what it does and then at the way end you just return uh best and here we start the prefix at zero um, let's give it a spin. I know I, I haven't done the memorization yet, but uh, but this is going to be n squared, or n times k anyway, maybe. Um, oh, did I not? Um, hmm. Oh, I guess this just goes out of bounds. That's why. Um, hmm. Uh, yeah, if index plus i is greater than or uh, greater than n so if it's exactly n it's okay then we break eh. i mean i i don't like writing the thing in the for loop or like i always am really bad about putting these conditions in the range loop so uh yeah hmm, still uh oh wait because this could be thing so okay because here we go index plus Okay, index plus i plus 1, so then that gets us to n, which is now is terminate. Okay, so here we have the idea, but it seems wrong. Maybe I misinterpret this. Yuki. Hmm. Well, I have, well the, the last one is 1. Okay, that's good. I get 49. Hmm. Dun, dun, dun. Let me debug it. I think this is mostly right, but maybe I have an off by 1 somewhere. Or something. Mm, this is what happens when you don't cache or memorize. Uh, okay, let's just actually add the memorization now. Um, the idea behind the memorization is that for every possible index, as you can even see here, you get the same input, you get the same output, right? Index and go from 0 to n. So let's do that, right? So cache is equal to none times n plus 1, and then has cache is equal to none times n plus 1, and this is false, actually, not none. And then we go with has cache of index, we return cache of index. Otherwise, we set cache of index is equal to true, and has cache of index is equal to true. Actually, I messed it up. Whatever, you, you get what I mean. And then now we can print cache at the way, end. oh no, I guess it's not, I mean, it is at the way end, but, eh. Okay, but then now we should be able to look at it in a more easy way. So 6 is 10, that's fine. 5 is, oh, I am dumb. Okay, that's fine. So this is the rolling max. So we want every number to be in that max. I, I miss, miss, I was thinking about it, but I didn't do it. But, uh, but this is i plus 1 times this. Because now every number, and we have i plus one of those numbers, we want to times it by the rolling max. Okay, I think this should be good. Yeah. Uh, let's give it a submit. 
And the way that I, I noticed it is that, you know, when I had two numbers, it was 15, but that obviously should be 20. So I think I was just adding 10 somewhere or something like this. But, um, okay. So then here, the, the complexity is going to be, well, each input takes O of K time. So total time is equal to O of N times K. And total space is just going to be O of N because each input takes only O of one space. And that's pretty much all I have for this one. So yeah, let me know what you think. Um, I, I actually might have misread this problem in a way in that like, or maybe had a wrong assumption. I was going to say that you can probably, if you are, or if you have to do K every time, then you could do, um, you know, there's a way to do a O of one max lookup um, by, you know, just pre-caching it or something like this. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, we, 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 we want to be able to choose any I or any K from zero to K. So, so yeah. Um, anyway, uh, cool. That's pretty much all I have. So let me know what you think. Stay good, stay healthy to good mental health. Give me some love. Give me some like, give me some subscribe. If you like this series, I'll see you later and take care. Bye-bye.